All right, hello everyone. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I call myself the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and I want to welcome you back to another edition of your Adrenal Fix. Today we, go we are going to be talking about adrenal fatigue testing, and specifically we're going to be talking about the Dutch test. And that is a four point uh, urine test where we do it at four points during the day. We do it at dinner time. We do it at bedtime. We do it at um, when we first wake up and then two hours later. And what's really great about that is the fact that when you do it in that way, you're taking into consideration the circadian rhythm, which means we are creatures of the sun and moon and we release different um hormones and different chemicals at different times of the day and so if you're just doing a blood sample in the morning and you're not looking at the entire spectrum of the entire day you're not getting a good idea of how your hormone secretions fluctuate so that's what we're going to be talking about um, I was a little off last weekend last week and a lot of my grasshoppers as I call it noticed that I was a little off and thank you for your concern and your feedback um, you know it's a good lesson when you're so busy making shoes that every now and then it's good to look down at your own shoes to make sure there's no holes in them and I think that's really what's happening with me is is that life is all about balance and when you're pouring out your energy to help people that have no energy you have to be careful that you don't deplete your own energy and that's a really important thing for a lot of you guys because we're a lot you know people like like us that are watching this and are looking for solutions to their health crisis where doctors are not listening they are not uh, feeling that adrenal fatigue is real is a real problem um, your blood tests come back normal uh, you've tried a, a bunch of other tests and you take you know a thousand and one different supplements uh, you go out for dinner and you can't have anything that's on the menu it gets to the point where even it's awkward to be around you because you're just gonna have you're the weirdo healthy person who's trying to be healthy yet um, no doctor validates what it is that you're feeling and you're exhausted and you're tired and you're frustrated and to make matters worse uh, doctors are not listening and you're the person that gives 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 and sometimes you have to have that integrity with yourself which means you can't just tell other people what to do to be healthy and not listen to your own advice so I think that's what's going on with me um, so you know it requires a lot more sleep uh, and it requires to reinvest in exercise and get back to the things that help balance your life and so one of the small things that I've done um, small hinges swing big doors one of the small things that I've done is I've switched to green tea um, and, and I really like flash brewing it so I have one of those nice Tivana things where I put steaming hot water in there I really let it in there for about 45 seconds and then I let the water out and you get all those great antioxidants I'm actually gonna do an article on polyphenols and the importance of that with replacing your minerals think about those green tea roots um, I was listening to a really awesome lecture that talked about something as simple as changing from coffee to tea can extend your life um, and, and, you know and that's a that's a small hinge and the reason if you look at the Japanese society um, or even the Asian society where they have uh, elders that are in the hundreds um, and and they look back and they see that this green tea that have these deep rooted uh, roots into the earth that suck out all those minerals and you can brew those those uh, green tea leaves up to six and seven times and you know at Tivana they told me oh, only twice or three times because they want me to go back and buy more tea leaves um, but you can do it seven or eight times and you the deeper you go um, the more mineral content that you break bring out and and there's like a whole society there like you know mustards and wines um, there's like connoisseurs for green tea so that's one of the small hinges that I've done um, but anyways um, and then also I want to thank you for um, your concern with my health I'm doing perfectly fine. Um, I, I just needed a little bit of a wake-up call with my with my own life and my own balance so that I can pour it into you. And you need to do the same thing. So today I wanted to talk to you about adrenal fatigue testing. We have a nice little tripod set up. Um, we're getting better. I was really, I was flustered last week because I had to hold it and I couldn't focus on what I wanted to tell you. And so now I don't have to worry about that. So we're getting better all the time. So anyways, I wanted to talk to you about um, the HP axis 
versus adrenal fatigue. And, and that's a really, really important um, distinction because a good friend of mine, Dr. Carrie Jones, I don't know if she says she is a good friend of mine, but I've talked to her and I've consulted with her and we've had a podcast uh, with her. And she probably would know me as the adrenal fatigue recovery ninja. I'm not sure. But anyways, I heard her talk the other day and she was talking about really the, the term adrenal fatigue is outdated. And that's why the medical doctors don't accept it. Um, it is your adrenals. They're tired. Um, they've been burnt down but it's not like they don't secrete their hormones. They do. Um, but what happens is the feedback loops get broken, so the hypothalamus and the pituitary and the adrenals, they don't output the, the, the cortisol at the right times of the day. Maybe we're not getting enough good quality hormone out so it actually doesn't work. Maybe the liver's not doing a great job so it's not breaking down and ridding the body of the hormone and then that hormone will bind to a receptor and it won't, won't work properly or maybe the receptor is not working well or maybe you are depleted in another hormone and you're seeing signs there. There's a lot of other mechanics that break down. So we like to think of it as an HPA dysfunction. And it would even be beyond that. It would be an HPA dysfunction. It could be a, um, it could be a uh, let's say, a hypo, uh, let's say a hypothalamic pituitary, uh, let's think of the uh, hippocampus problem. It could be also a, uh, a phase two. Uh, liver breakdown problem. It could be a melatonin and pineal modulation problem. Fancy terms I know I'm talking about, but suffice it to say, it's not really about the adrenals being exhausted and they don't output any, um, any cortisol. And so to give you a little ammunition, if you went to your doctor and you said, hey, listen, I think I got adrenal fatigue. And you say, I know, I know. The adrenals still output cortisol, but it's the feedback loops that I'm concerned about. It's the fact that my pituitary is tired and I have a secondary hypothyroid problem and my pituitary is not spitting out the right sequences of, of, of hormones, um, my, my liver is not breaking down these things effectively, uh, my feedback loops are, are not doing a great job, I have a lot of chemical messengers and IL-6 and um, TNF-alpha that are junking up the way that signals are being sent, my cell membranes are being oxidized. I know, I know it's not adrenal fatigue, but you know, something's going on here. And that's who I am. I'm the ninja, so you guys can learn about that. So anyways, um, I wanted to talk to you about um, about catabolic versus anabolic. And so um, the, the Dutch test is a really great test because it tells us about um, is there an HPA axis dysfunction? And I'll show you that in a second. Um, I do love the saliva samples too, and I love the blood test, so why not do all three of them? Um, the Ninja does all three of them. The Ninja looks at all three because all three can tell me a little bit of information that the other one can't, and ultimately I wanna fix the problem. I don't wanna just put a Band-Aid on it. I wanna do it so the point is I'm not just telling you, hey, there's no such thing as adrenals, or hey, it's only about giving you more uh, core Cortisol, or hey, it's only about giving you DHEA, or it's only about giving you some pregnenolone, or let's give you some licorice root, or let's give you some adaptogens, or let's give you some phosphatidylserine, or maca root. Those are potentially all good things, but it's not going to fix why. Why is this happening and what else is breaking down? And if these things aren't addressed um, at the cellular level, which you know I preach, um, and, and the genetic component isn't considered, um, then you're not gonna fix the problem and you're just gonna be looked at like the round world thinker um, in the times of Christopher Columbus um, and uh, you know all these you know these scientists and in these dark ages where the world was flat yet you're an early adopter and they tell you that you're crazy it's no you're crazy I'm not crazy you're crazy so anyways the catabolic versus anabolic um, cortisol is a hormone that breaks things down and helps us deal with stress and helps us reduce inflammation and helps control our our, our electro light and our water balance so it's a really important thing it needs to sort of cash in your 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 check so that you can use that liquidity um, and there's a reason why it's called liquid we can use that liquid um, um, ability to utilize the nutrients right away versus stored and that's what that's what um, cortisol does um, we'll look at DHEA um, and the relationship between 5-alpha. I know a lot of women that I've worked with have been told, okay, get on DHEA 
DHEA and you know so I do a consult with them okay how long have you been on DHEA oh since 19 since the Nixon uh, the Nixon um, uh, contingency um, no I mean it's just too long I mean you know it's one of those things where we test it for say 30 60 90 days max and see how you're doing and I would never ever tell anyone to take DHEA without knowing their five alpha levels and the Dutch test will tell us about that um, licorice root again a lot of people been on licorice root for a long time and I want to know about your 11 beta HSD levels so that if you're taking licorice root and eventually your inactive um, free cortisone which is sort of like the the, the um, army reserves of cortisol um, uh, the 11 beta HSD will convert it to the um, the the troops the deployed troops um, licorice root helps that so if you keep doing that over and over and over and over again eventually you can deplete yourself of uh, of potassium and that's a big one too so people depleted in potassium I want to know hey what's going on with your with your intake and that's a big lesson you need to know like hey these drugs and these medications and these supplements that I'm taking they actually might be causing some physiological uh, side effects if I'm not doing them at the right intensities or the right amounts or the right durations eventually it's a lot of the time is just untangling the web that the bioidenticals and the prednisones and the, um, the 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 pain meds and the asthma inhalers that you've been taking forever and ever and ever and you forgot about hey maybe those have something to do with why these are skewing too and maybe you don't need those anymore so make sure your doctor assesses you for these things because it's a very real um, clinical differentiating diagnosis tool to know what you're dealing with um, and then we look at the liver phase one and phase two um, saliva samples does not tell us about that um, also our blood test does not tell us about that um, and then I'm going to talk about some case studies so that's what we're going to be talking about today and so um, typically if there's any questions try to save them till the end and um, I'm going to try to um, give you some information with my genetic tests as well. I know last time someone actually emailed me and told me that it was not my best performance and while I was humbled and um, I don't think flattered, um, while I was appreciative of the information, um, I, uh, it makes me get on my game here but I said hey listen <laughs> I'm trying to help you here um, and everyone's a critic and um, but I'll be better next time so anyways here's what we look at on the Dutch test we have under the adrenal markers we have three dials we have the total DHEA we have the metabolized cortisol and then we have the um, free cortisol all right, so the free cortisol, the free cortisol represents, and I'm sorry if you can't see that, um, the free cortisol represents about 1% of your circulating hormones. Um, and remember, this is a urine test, so it's no longer in circulation. It's in the urine, it's out of the system, it's in the cup. And so it's not, it's not in circulation. Um, the metabolized cortisol is all of the cortisol that you used up that is, is bound to a protein. Um, and so it typically inside the body represents about 98, 99% of your total cortisol levels. Whereas the free cortisol represents only one to 2% of your free, of your total cortisol levels. So when I used to do only saliva tests, and I would see this off the charts. Let's say it needed to be here and you were down here. And I would see free cortisol levels off the charts. Then I would do something like, hey, let's do some phosphatidylserine. Um, let's try to reduce your free cortisol levels um, because they're too high and you're in acute state. But I would then look and see um, now after I did started doing this test, I would see that their metabolized cortisol was in the dumper. And so here I was making a decision with only saliva tests saying, hey, your, your 1% of your total hormones that circulate in the body is really high. So that must mean your 100% is really high. But the Dutch test tells us that's not necessarily the case. Your metabolized cortisol can be low. 
So you would have a paradoxal result where your free cortisol, which represents 1% to 2% of what's total in your body, is high, but the 98 to 99% of the metabolized cortisol is low. Now, why would that happen? We'll talk about that in a second. What I've learned, though, is, is that the metabolized cortisol really represents the 80% of, of what's been circulating in your body. I guess a certain percent of it doesn't come out or it can't be measured effectively, but still you're comparing 1% with just a saliva sample versus the, um, the 80% in a urine sample, um, or um, sorry, 1% in a urine sample of your free cortisol versus 80% of your metabolized cortisol. So now, one of the knocks that those in the know will say, hey, well, the Dutch test is not great at looking at your circadian rhythm, and then we don't get to see your hippocampus and, and how your temporal lobe and how you're regulating that, that rhythm of spitting out cortisol throughout the entire day. And, and then you can't really get a good idea about the HPA axis. And I would disagree because when you look at the metabolized cortisol. Um, I have actually a case study here, which we'll talk about, is a patient that I had who had rheumatoid arthritis. And she, um, she was super high, like she, her metabolized cortisol was on a level, um, should be 4,300, and she was um, 6,000 on her metabolized um, cortisol. So that tells me that there's no fatigue there. That's your HPA axis spitting out a boatload of cortisol. So how can I, as a doctor, say, yeah, your adrenals are fatigued? They're not. The HPA axis is on wind-up. It's just going crazy. There's something that's causing it to go crazy. And she had a rheumatoid, so she had an autoimmunity. Her immune system was out of control, usually secondary to infections, uh, toxic exposures, um, stress, physical injury, pain, um, all of the above. You put it in a meat grinder, you put all the environment and stress and pathogens and inflammation in a grinder, you spit it out, your body's going to have to make a boatload of cortisol to have to deal with that. And then all of a sudden, your liver has to get rid of that. Your liver will upregulate. And if you're, you get rid of that at a quick level, then potentially what you can have is a low free cortisol. And that was for Maria. Maria, I know you are still, I tried to answer it last time. I guess I didn't answer it well enough for you. Um, but that can happen too, where an autoimmune phenomena, your immune system is upregulated. There's a virus, there's a pathogen. You have excitation from a neurotransmitter um, like a quinol quinolinic acid that is just causing your body to go into sympathetic overdrive and your liver is upregulated and you're getting rid of the metabolized cortisol faster than there's going to be remaining 1% of free cortisol. It's getting rid of it too. It's getting flushed down the toilet too. And so it's not around to be there. That's a big, big lesson. So hopefully the mystery is solved because I saw that you, asked, you wanted to know about that. Um, but um, the other thing we look at though is we look at the total DHEA. And what's really good is if we look at the ratio be, be, between these two guys, between your total DHEA and your total metabolized cortisol, we can't see that on a, on a saliva test, we can't see that on a, uh, a blood test, um, then we can tell if we're in a catabolic state or we're in an anabolic state. So let me explain. When you have really high cortisol, which is a hormone that causes things to break down, and you have really low uh, DHEA, which causes um, repair and regeneration and regrowth, um, and one, the regrowth is low and the breakdown is high, are you more catabolic? Or are you more anabolic? You're more catabolic and vice versa. If your total DHEA is high and your metabolized cortisol is low, then you're still in a, you're more in an anabolic state. And, and so this test can tell us about that. Why is that important? Because it tells me, hey, how long has this been going on? How's your body compensating? What can we do in terms of nutritional support or lifestyle support? I mean, just looking at the ocean with blinders on and saying there's no boats in the ocean, 
um, and then taking them off and seeing thousands of boats in the ocean is the equivalent of taking your blood test in the morning and telling you you don't have anything called adrenal fatigue because there's no such thing. You're missing all of the details. Like wake up and smell the, smell the coffee. There's a lot of details that you're missing by being so dogmatic and saying there's no such thing. I mean, get your head into the books and start learning about this stuff. And I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to health professionals that say there's no such thing. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, so we answered that question as well. The other question I wanted to talk to you about is um, looking at, I think we wanted to look at your, um, the different enzymes. So again, so now with total DHEA, um, I usually joke around and say that's kind of like your, your mutual funds, your savings account. And, and so if your savings account is starting to dip, then we know that we are cashing it in um, at the expense of a rainy day. Meaning um, we need to tap into our stored resources that are supposed to be used for building blocks and investments and future monies or future fund um, to, to deal with the stress that you have right now. And your body, your HPA axis tells you, hey, um, you, need to, you need to produce more cortisol. There's an immune problem. There's a stressor. There's an infection. There's a pesticide. There's a chemical. You're not stabilizing your blood sugar. You have a major injury, all of the above. How do we know if you have those things? There's this new thing in healthcare. It's called taking a good history and listening to what your patients tell you and not saying, hey, it's time to get out of the office because, you know, I, I, I accept insurance. Insurance pays me less than I got paid, you know, 15 years ago when I started into practice, even though everything else has gone up and I just don't have the time to hear it. And your blood tests are normal. And, you know, if you have a problem, then maybe you should go on some antidepressants or anti-anxiety or maybe you go see, you know, let's just pass the buck. Go to the, go to the gastro. Go to the rheumatoid. Go to the cardiologist. Go to the ENT. Um, you know, it's just tell me with a share of likes because um, I haven't asked you for that for a while. If that's what's happening, if you have stacks and stacks of paperwork, um, if you're told that there's nothing wrong, that there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue, um, and you are looking for a solution to get better to a problem that the medical society doesn't even believe exists, um, I guess there's no likes. I know there's a delay, um, but if you agree with that, let me know. So, so that's, that's a big problem. As far as DHEA goes, um, we, there's three things that make up DHEA. Um, there's DHEAS, there's etiocolonolone, and androsterone. And we'll see on the Dutch test how you're metabolizing those so that we get a better idea as to what we can do to fix these things. Um, I think that was pretty much it. Sometimes we'll see, let me just bring up another case study where we saw another a finding. So I had a patient who was very, very, very overweight and they were really high on here and really low on here. And so that doesn't mean you have to be very overweight for that to happen, um, but it tells us your body is making a lot of cortisol. Your HPA axis is fine. In fact, it's overworking and you're having to break it down at a fast rate uh, and so and get rid of it. And that's, pardon me, an energetically demanding process. Um, and so what will happen ultimately is insulin resistance, um, inflammation is going to cause that cortisol levels to be super high and as you get rid of it at a fast rate you don't have a lot of free cortisol left so I had that I had another patient who had um, some insulin resistance and she was down here on that and she was down here on her metabolized so this was more of a chronic stressor. This was a person who had low blood sugar that caused insulin resistance versus high blood sugar that caused insulin resistance. And that will happen if you're hypoglycemic your whole life um, and you feel shaky, lightheaded, and jittery, you get energized when you have a meal, you can't focus and concentrate, you crave salts, you have really low blood pressure, um, you stand up and you get fainty. By a show of likes, because no one liked the other stuff that I said, um, by a show of likes, tell me who has these problems in terms of not being able to you know, regulate your blood sugar levels. Um, because ultimately what will happen is when those sugar levels go too low, that's going to cause 
insulin and cortisol to release at the same time because your body's in a stressed mode and hey there's no glucose inside the cell um, so cortisol you got to you know mobilize and break down stored glycogen or even stored muscle and get that glucose into the cell and hey insulin you got to like wring that sponge and get whatever last little drops that is in the blood sugar inside the cell and that's what causes that insulin resistance not to mention inflammation will oxidize the cell membranes and not allow the message to be sent and signaled yet there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue maybe maybe technically this is not a in this case this would be a fatigue pop problem because the HPA axis is not doing a good job it's really really low the hypothalamus is like hey we already spent a lot of money on you and you just continue to you get stressed out and we just don't have a lot of raw materials and we're tired too and we're not gonna output a lot of cortisol and that's where you see more of a chronic fatiguer or chronic stressor and that's where your DHEA levels also will be low so depending on where you are on the dial with all of these values will depend on a what's going on and b what you can do to fix it I, I can't believe you guys aren't giving me any likes um, it's just press on that like button or press on the heart button just to know that you're paying attention because so far I haven't gotten one so if I don't get one I'm gonna do a little song and dance here um, but I, maybe it's the like buttons aren't working I don't know maybe it's just a terrible presentation um, then we also had another case study of a PCOS um, female and so she was polycystic and she had super super high DHEA which we would expect um, and she had super, super low metabolized cortisol and super, super low free, metab free cortisol. Now, why would that be? She was younger. She was less than 30 years of age and the DHA was high. She's aromatizing. And what that means is that's God's cool trick on females and males when you have insulin resistance or inflammation. It will turn your main um, hormone in for men, testosterone, it will turn it into estrogen. And for women um, with estrogen, it will turn it into testosterone. And as a result, that's what was happening. She was aromatizing. So she was actually um, putting more money in her mutual funds. Um, and that was creating a lot of androgenicity tendencies. So what does that mean? It means she had um, hair growth where she didn't want it, um, oily skin, irritability, anger, rage, um, even male pattern baldness, um, multiple cysts insulin resistance, so heavy weight around the midsection. A lot of these things were happening. Um, so anyways, um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about on the Dutch test, which is super cool, um, is two enzymes. These two enzymes um, are 5-alpha and 11-beta HSD. And if we don't have these, these pieces of information, then we are not going to know how to supplement properly. So we're looking at 5-alpha um, and 11-beta. So 5-alpha, it's upregulated when we have a lot of cortisol or we're in a stress mode or our HPA axis is over-firing. Why would it do that? Well, typically insulin resistance, we're not balancing our blood sugar very well. Typically inflammation uh, or we have a... Um, immune problem, all these eyes, um, but that's going to cause your cortisol levels to go higher and 5-alpha is the enzyme that has to break it down, but it's also the enzyme that helps break down testosterone and it makes the more androgenic form of testosterone. So if you're a woman and you have insulin resistance, inflammation, and immune dysregulation, you are going to convert a lot of your estrogen into testosterone, number one, and when you break down testosterone, it's gonna be more androgenic. And so what are the things you can do for this? Um, there are things like metformin will actually help that. I'm not a proponent, actually metformin is a whole other Facebook topic. Um, but um, you can do things like stinging nettles, um, which would be really helpful, um, sal palmetto, all the, you know, the, the the prostate stuff can be really, really helpful. Um, there is um, pig, pignolium, I think it's what it's called. Um, I, a couple other notes. What are the other things that we, we use for that? Um, we can use, 
Uh, what are the other things that we have? Zinc is really good. Um, reishi, reishi mushroom, stuff that's gonna help your immune system, stuff that's gonna help your inflammation and, and settle down your blood sugar. Those are gonna be really good. So now, would I put someone who, who has an upregulated 5-alpha and has HPA axis and metabolized cortisol levels going through the roof, um, would I put them on cortisol, uh, DHEA? Um, would I put them on DHEA? I just bought these today and they're already out. Um, would I put them on DHEA? That's the big question mark. It really depends on how low that DHEA is um, and what we can do to give them a little boost. You know, we can have them eat healthy fats and help them absorb those healthy fats with a good ox bile, lipase, um, pores, you know, uh, um, something that's going to help with absorption of, of that fatty acids um, and then that's going to upregulate your cholesterol raw materials to be able to make more of the, the, the natural hormones that you should be making on your own, namely um, pregnenolone and then that's going to go down into cortisol and, and maybe even DHEA. Um, I would probably do it short term but I would put these things in place that are going to block that 5-alpha activity, salt, palmetto, zinc, um, reishi mushroom, stuff that's going to slow that down. Um, the other thing I would do is I would retest. And that's the thing I forgot to tell you is the best part of a, of a Dutch test or a saliva test or a blood test is not so much the test itself. It's the follow-up test. And I can't tell you how many people that I've worked with, um, I say, okay, well, let me see your follow-up test. And there is no follow-up test. Like, why is there no follow-up test? Because we, we're, we're swimming in the ocean, we don't need a map. We're just in the middle of the ocean and we just want to swim forever and we don't care about the land and, and where we're going and whether we're going in the right direction. We're just swimming, swimming, swimming. And you're drowning and you're, you're exhausted and you're tired and you're not getting the answers that you want. Um, so that was, that's really important. I want to know about 5-alpha activity. Um, for men, um, I've talked to men that have been on um, the, um, the things like um, finasteride. Um, those will be the things that will really lower 5-alpha activity and these males are having HPA axis problems, um, they're not being able to secrete enough androgenic testosterone and, and that's a big problem. Um, a lot of women who've been on acne medication um, and spiral nalactone will slow that down as well and, and they are very tired too. So there's always um, compounding um, information when you have medications that mess up this whole thing as well. The other thing I wanted to talk to you is about 11 beta HSD. So 11 beta HSD, it talks about cortisone and it, talk, and, and it, and it fluctuates between cortisone and cortisol. So your body will naturally, naturally say, hey, we're in a HPA axis overdrive. 11 beta HSD is going to favor making some of that excess cortisol into cortisone. That is the inactive form. And when you have that inactive form, it's not going to be catabolic. It's not going to break things down. Um, but in those people, they don't have a good 11 beta HSD. It's not working properly. And they are upregulated when they're already um, producing too much HPA access, cortisol, uh, metabolized stuff. So we suggest um, magnolia, skull cap, Zisphys, citrus peel ex extract. Those will be things that will lower those levels. So I'll post a link to some of these things that will help with 11 beta, will help with 5 alpha, will help with um, regulating your circadian rhythm potentially, give cortisol a better half-life. I haven't even talked about those things, um, but those are some of the pieces of information. So hopefully your head is sort of shaking like, yeah, there is such a thing as HPA axis dysfunction um, or adrenal feedback breakdown or your hippocampal breakdown, or you know phase one and phase two, and we really haven't talked about that. We'll talk about that in, in a couple moments here. Um, and, and, and my doctor hasn't even heard of a Dutch test, um, and he thinks or she thinks that doing a blood test is, is suffice enough to say, or doing an ACTH test is suffice enough to say um, that there's nothing wrong with me. And, and so we can tell a lot of information. The scary thing is what's actually going on below the surface. There's a lot more going below. But with the 11 beta, sometimes you will see um, the cortisone 
is favored when you need to have more cortisol. So you would want to upregulate that cortisol. And that's where licorice root could come into handy. So if we're really tired and we're not making a lot of cortisol, our HPA axis is low, we'll do licorice root. But what will happen over time, this 11 beta will start to favor that and we'll start depleting ourselves of, cal of potassium. And that's a, a huge problem too. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about and share with you guys um, was phase one and phase two of liver detox, specifically estrogen. So with estrogen, we have three ways that estrogen can break down. We have, um, we call this the most protective phase one, um, and this is more cancer routes. And so I've had patients, it should be at least 70% here. I believe it is 10% and 20%. And so I'll have patients that are, you know, 30% here. And that's where they're more likely to have a cancer from an estrogen. And I can't think of a better test than this to look at how well women metabolize estrogen. Um, there are certain things that we can do um, to push it down that more protective pathway. Um, but it may actually be a methylation issue. In fact, I just had a patient today that we talked to, and she didn't even have MTHFR, but she has problems with phase two of liver detox because of um, SHMT, BHMT, MTR, um, COMT, a lot of other enzymes that don't allow me to methylate and get rid of this. So lots I threw at you today. I was kind of d disappointed. I didn't get any likes or hearts. I I'm hoping that the heart or like button was broken. Um, maybe, I, maybe it just didn't happen. I don't know. Um, but um, that's what I had planned for you today. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do is open it up for questions um, and really try to expose the medical flaws. Like I, I say that there's five medical flaws that really cripple your energy. And the first one is believing that there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue. I mean, let's give it a different definition if you want. If you get insulted because I'm giving you a term that's an internet term and you just don't want to accept it, I can agree with that. Give it a different term though, but don't put your head in the sand and say that there's no such thing as that. Number two, don't just look at the adrenals and don't just look at a saliva test or don't even just look at a Dutch test. Look at all three and look at what is going on. Like I got a patient, she was mad at me because after we went over this, she goes, why am I like this? And I'm like, well, this test doesn't tell you that. And she was mad. And I was like, why are you mad? And she said, because I wanted to know why. And I was like, this is not why, this is how and what. Um, but the why is like your stressful life, the moldy house, the toxic relationship, the pathogen and virus that you had, um, the Lyme disease, um, the heavy metal toxicities, um, the abuse, the post-traumatic stress, the physical injury, the car accident, all of those things are why. And, and, and so, um, but don't just focus on the adrenals. Um, that's the second medical error. Uh, a lot of practitioners, holistic practitioners do that. The third one is not looking at the environmental component and looking at the genetic component. The genetics are really important. I didn't even go in there. I didn't go in there because I didn't want you guys to get frustrated because you couldn't see the board, but there's a lot of genetics in there that you need to know about. Um, the, the fourth mistake is that doctors just put everyone on the same program and they don't look at, um, you know, you're different and that you may need something more than someone else needs. And you may not be ready for detoxing because you don't have any minerals on board. Um, and there's a hierarchy to having to fix these things. And you can't just charge in and start all willy-nilly at some spot and not actually get to the, the priority and the hierarchy like baking a cake. You know, you're not going to crack an egg and put it on the baked, you know, product, or you're not going to put your icing sugar in the batter. Um, you got to do it in proper sequence. And then the fifth one, which kind of pains me to say, um, is the fact that, um, you know, you, you, in today's day and age, um, and don't shoot the messenger, um, you are not going to get quality care for your chronic problem by going through the medical model and going through the insurance model. And people get mad at me for that. And I wish it was different. It's not different. And if you want a Dutch test, if you want a genetic test, if you want a hair sample test, if you want a micronutrient test, if you want an organic acid test, if you want these tests to actually understand this and put the pieces of the puzzle together, guess what? Insurance is not paying for it. It really isn't. 
And, and that pains me to say that because I wish I could help more people. But at the same time, it comes down to the people that we do help. They have three things in common. The first one is they're really, really decisive and committed. And I would even say a fourth thing. They have things on their to-do list that have to give back and have to ha that they haven't accomplished yet. They know they're not living their dream. They know they're not um, living their true uh, expression of their self. They know if they were a lawyer, um, they knew that that was the wrong career choice and they've always wanted to be a musician or they always wanted to be an artist or they always wanted to have their own you know um, hair salon I don't know what it is but they know they weren't expressing themselves and they had to give back in a way if that's you that's who we help number two is people that are coachable nothing bothers me more than someone that will just pick and choose what I decide um, or recommend for them to do um, and they'll do this test but not that test because you know they don't think that test is important um, I'm not doing this so that I can pad the stats per se. I don't need the the help with testing because I test, I charge people what the test lab test me. So if I go and get my Dutch test, I'm paying 250. If you can go and get your lab test, you're paying 250. Um, the, the retail price is 395 on that. And so I, I don't charge the retail price. So I have no motivation to charge you extra. I only have motivation to understand what's going wrong. And I don't like to be handcuffed and be told, okay, well, let's just pick this one over that one. It's not a good program for you if that's how you want to do it. The third one is just resourcefulness. Um, realizing elephants in the room need to be addressed. Um, if you're in a toxic relationship, if you're in a toxic environment, if you're in a toxic job, um, if you are just being beat down psychologically, logically over and over and over again you have to do something about it and I'm really proud of a lot of people on this forum who have PM'd me and I hope you know who I'm talking about I'm really proud of you in and 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 looking after yourself and looking after your children and and look having your best interests um, getting a job and taking that leap of faith um, these people realize that not changing is more painful than changing and, and being resourceful means figuring out that insurance is not going to pay for this. But I've been nickel and dimed and I've had thousands of dollars. I'm already spending money on health insurance. I'm spending money on supplements. I'm spending money on doctors that don't even know what a Dutch test is. I'm spending money on, on you know, this little pharmacy that I open up and I have a thousand and one different supplements. And then here's my, you know, my notebook of, of notes that I've done and I'm no better. And, and I've missed work, I haven't had promotions, I'm on disability, and 10 years have gone by, and I know even at $25,000 a year, minimally, that's $250,000. And, and we're not talking about how much money you spent. And, and now, now you, you're, you're fearful that, that you don't want to you know, invest in getting yourself better. Those aren't the people that do my program. Um, the people that do are, are the ones that realize that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's painful to not do anything and not live the life that you were intended. So anyways, that's what I had planned today. Um, I do have links. I'll have links under here to sign up for a 45-minute consult. I've been having a lot of cancellations, a lot of frustration there. Um, please don't sign up if you're not serious. Um, if you are, there's no, there's no obligation to, to start with me. Um, this is just about getting to the truth and finding out why you're still suffering. And, you know, I know you guys. I know you better than you. You spend lots of time in front of the computer trying to research what's going on because the doctor's certainly not doing it for you. And you're getting close and you're understanding that, hey, I got this or I got that, I got this, I got that. But then this person says you should do this and this person says you shouldn't do this. And then I go to my doctor and they just laugh at me because I shouldn't do any of those. I should just be on, you know, antidepressants. Um, I see that all the time. And, and that's a real shame and, and that's a real, real problem. And so anyways, I just wanted to um, share that with you. If there's any questions, I'm really surprised because I don't see any questions and I, I didn't see any likes or even comments. So I'm just hoping that you guys were here and you were able to take part. Um, I don't know what happened with that. Um, maybe I turned off the commenting section. Um, I don't know. Um, I was so focused on giving you a good presentation today. I hope you found it very valuable. I really used to like to ask, um, answer questions during these times. Um, if there's any other um, comments, um, post them in the link after this. I'll check to see if I allowed for comments to be allowed. I don't even know if I did or not. I'm going to press a button here and see if I did. No. I don't know. 
looks like I can't post myself. So anyways, um, that's all I have planned for you tonight. I'll think of a great topic for next week. Hope you guys are um, balancing your life. I hope you're taking time to smell the coffee. Um, think of the small little things that you can do every day that add up and add years to your life, like something small, like going from green tea to, to, to coffee. It's going to make a huge difference for you. And um, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I call myself the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and I'm dedicated dedicating my life to ending your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Have an awesome evening. Take care.